Hey guys, we got a 2012 Hyundai Elantra. This is a 1.8 liter. And we got some electrical issues on here. The story is the customer put in a doubled in uh, aftermarket stereo and um, now a bunch of electrical things aren't working. The blower fan isn't working, the wipers aren't working. Um, I think there's a few others. I don't know if that happened immediately after that stereo install. Um, or if that's just coincidental, uh, just uh, a bunch of stuff isn't working, so we're tasked to fix it, and we'll take you along. Um, anytime I'm doing something like this, I plan on having the key in the on position for a long period of time. Uh, I don't like um, worrying about the battery dying, so I always start off by hooking up my battery charger. That way, the whole way through, I can leave it in the on position, you know, I can have my scan tool hooked up, I can go look at the wiring diagrams, kind of do other things, get a game plan, all the while not having to worry about this sucker dying on me. So, let me take you inside and I'll show you what I see. Okay, we're inside the vehicle and as you can see, we have uh, just shy of 250,000 kilometers on it. Uh, right now we have the key in the on position. And there's the aftermarket stereo that they installed. Hey, you know what? Looks nice. Yeah, <laughs> this thing. That thing don't look so nice. I guess that's a magnetic holder for a phone or something, but giant old wood screw in there all the way through. Uh, give you some light. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, 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 ain't that something. But you know what? I guess if it works, it works. Um, I would have thought some double-sided tape might be a little bit better than a, a giant screw. But hey, anyways, what can you do? Uh, so, keys in the on position. We have wipers right here. As you can see, they ain't doing nothing. Um, no spray, no none of that stuff. Um, here's the HVAC unit. Um, no lights there nothing okay the hazards work um but anyways uh there might be other things but at least this gives us plenty to go off of um the hvac and the wipers so it is relatively new one of the things you have to worry about um these stereos this being a 2012 you might not have to worry about it as much but on the newer vehicles a lot of times the stereos can be a, a gateway module for uh, the CAN network or um, one of the other low speed networks for all the uh, um, uh, um, infotainment that's the word I'm looking for so sometimes when you put in an aftermarket stereo you also have to put in a uh, uh, a dummy module that just passes on those messages otherwise it can um, interfere with the network this one being a 2012 I don't know if that's the case so we grab the scan tool and we just do a code scan now we don't really see we just see airbag and occupancy then we go to report um, and we got a defect and uh, weight check you know what that's pretty normal for something like one of these so not too concerned about that um, if we go back here if we go out of the code scan yeah and we go in control unit we see there is an air conditioning module and then if we click on that wait for that a minute Kevin you can do it there we go uh, no calm so that could be interesting but if we look at this with a little bit of background information that is the uh, manual HVAC unit it is not um, uh, automatic climate control so the only the automatic climate control um, or the automatic temperature control has uh, a module that's on the network this guy right here if you see the the manual settings for the temperature on this outer dial if you see that then there's no module in the network it's just a uh, um, basic electrical so nothing to do with that um, we can ignore the scan tool that ain't gonna help us any good so what do we do 
anytime I'm uh, faced with an issue like this, what I always do is I keep in the back of my mind all the things that could potentially be similar. If you can find a common denominator, that would be awesome. But really all I do, I focus in on whatever is the easiest to test. The easiest, simplest circuit to go through and test. Find the root cause of that. And hey, maybe that will fix everything. Or maybe they'll just fix the one thing and then go on to the next, 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 next if it doesn't fix everything. For me, especially with this being a manual temperature control, this blower fan is not working. Keep in mind, we're in the on position. This, sorry, ha, this one right here. This blower fan not working, to me, that is the simplest and easiest circuit. So I'll take you to the wiring diagram and we'll look to see what kind of testing we're gonna do. Okay, here we are. Uh, again, I'm just gonna focus straight in on the blower fan right down here. So if we follow this back, we got our blower motor resistor, we got our blower control switch, and we see that we have a ground, just like most of them, that comes to the switch, and then it comes through our resistor, and then that comes over to the blower fan, and if we follow this yellow wire up, that is our blower relay. And we see that we have an air con fuse in, uh, inside the vehicle, so smart junction box, under left side of the dash near kick panel. And this guy right here, the big fuse for the actual blower fan itself. Um, this is in left corner of engine compartment. Uh, so you know what? This is probably the easiest to look at, so let's give that a quick peek. Grab a light. And we're looking for a 40 amp, 40 amp uh, blower. So if we look right here, uh, we got a B plus two is a 60. We have 40 spare and then a blower 40 amp right there. So third one in, second row. So if we look down here, we can see there's a little 10 amp fuse. It's all right. This is one of these goofy guys. Um, so if we go back over here, this whole row right here, as that goes across, um, so see right here, this, this wiper, that 10 amp fuse there for the wiper. Conveniently, that's also not working, but we'll ignore that for now. Um, that is that one right down there. So that's for the row that's above the blower. Well, where the heck is that blower fuse? See that bar right there? I don't know if you can see where that B is. Yeah, that's your blower fuse. It's all a big, um, it's all a big central kind of fuse, fuse panel. Well, that ain't gonna do us any good. Um, since there's a whole bunch of other things not working, um, you know what, the chances of that, just that single big 40 amp fuse, whoa, I'm falling here. So the chances of the single 40 amp fuse um, being blown somehow when everything else is gone, probably unlikely. So we'll move on to this one right here. This air con fuse 10 amp inside the junction box. So let's go inside the vehicle and see what we see there. Okay guys, we're inside the vehicle. Now on these Hyundais, you find the fuse panel uh, right in here. So you pull this little panel off, it says fuse slash OBD, right where we plug our dongle in. We'll get that out of the way since we don't need that anymore. And up inside there is the fuse panel. Now we're gonna make it easier because I suspect that we're gonna be doing a bunch of testing there. I'm just gonna remove this whole kick panel here. So in order to do that, first thing you do, you pull this trim out of the way. We get some kind of polar. Yeah, it should be plastic, but you know what? I've already pulled this off with plastic, so um, comes off easy. So just pry that off. Oh, I knocked my light over. I need to get some better lighting for this. Um, so to pull this off, there are uh, a couple screws. There's one down here. Let's get you where you can see. Um, so there's one down there, one also up there, and then uh, the other screw is down there. So 
unless you pull off this little panel right here you might not see those screws so uh then you get your little hopefully i can do this one-handed it's been off so it should come off easily um come on Ugh. and these just pop right out just like that now this guy right here will undo the there we go get this out of the way oh right on top of my scanner i'm sorry guy come on there we go so on the uh, dlc you just push these little guys these tabs right in there and then it pops right up okay so there's our fuse panel hopefully you guys can see that um so we are looking for the aircon 10 amp fuse um straighten this out a little bit um what do we got so there's a 10 amp blower um there's a seven and a half amp aircon down there uh well it said 10 amp air con but it was for the blower so presumably it's this one right here on the left um yeah so we'll check that get down to a nice comfortable position and we'll hook up our this is all nice and metal so that's good for that come on there we go. And get our test light. So the blower one is right here. Now this is one of those case scenarios where I like to know what I'm going for. Let's make sure. All right, so these are these goofy micro fuses. My uh, um, test light isn't going in there that well. I don't want to have to worry about that. So what I'm going to do, I figured this was going to be an issue. So I was kind of prepared and got my um, back probe and piercer. So now, oh, come on. Is that gonna stay? I think that'll stay. Okay, so now when I touch things, if I can touch a thing, there we go. So I get a, a much easier time of knowing that I am on the contact. So um, let me just light this guy back up. Can we get you a eh, somewhere like that? So we'll touch this 10 amp right there. Okay, it's not lit. This is that air con fuse. Not lit. Okay, we'll go to the one below that. Not lit. Go to the one above it. Not lit, not lit. Okay, this one is lit. The seven and a half, which is module two. And then way up here, you're also not lit. Um, what about anything wiper related? Uh, do we see anything? Hey, look at that. Can you see that? There's an air con right there and there's a wiper front. Let's check both of those. So that would be this seven and a half amp down there. Uh, I can't really see very well. You probably can't see, but not lit. We'll go to the other side. Not lit either. We'll go up to this side of that, the wiper, not lit. And 
not lit so it's not a dead fuse that doesn't have power either we'll go to some other fuse lights up right away so our test equipment's good um so coincidentally enough uh, because apparently all these functions stopped happening at the same time it uh, makes sense that the wiper fuse as well as that blower fuse over here both of those have no power um, so we'll keep that in mind with the wiper but we're going to continue looking at this blower and see where that leads us so let's go see where that gets its power from okay so we were looking at this aircon fuse 10 here um, which says hot and on so let's follow that back and see where it gets its power from so if we go back to vehicle diagrams and non oe and power not powertrain um uh power and ground i always do that okay so we are looking aircon 10 is inside so usually with these re um diagrams especially the non oe style they'll start off with whatever is closest to the battery so to speak so they'll start off with the main fuse box under the hood we don't care about that this is uh under hood we don't care about that ems box we don't care about that um here's our ignition switch probably care about that later on uh what is this uh kick panel inside the vehicle all right um dum 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 so we're looking for a 10 amp uh also under a uh, kick panel um air con hey there's that 25 amp uh wiper fuse but we're looking for an air con 10 amp that's weird that this seven and a half says that goes to the blower relay but supposedly it was a 10 amp that went to the blower relay huh well that's weird so but anyways we did see a seven and a half amp fuse right underneath that wiper fuse is 20 amp and it said aircon as well um and it this one here says it goes to blower relay so uh, as well as the ac control panel neither of those are working so we'll go after this one because we also saw that it had no power um this is convenient because we follow it back it's on the same uh, circuit as the wiper fuse. So it says G um, from module seven fuse, page two of six. So we'll just go back, we'll find G. G is right here. So it says uh, module seven is a seven and a half. We got rear seat heaters. I don't think this vehicle has those, but either way. And we follow up this orange uh, with smart. We're not smart key. We are an actual turn key. So, hey, right here from the ignition switch. Okay. Well, there's not much else involved there. Be kind of weird, but what if we got a bad ignition switch? So... If we look here, especially since we're not smart key, we don't have any um, solid state electronics in the way. Uh, we just have this ignition switch. Um, this one here says starting and charging. So uh, I would think the vehicle wouldn't start if that side were problematic. So I would think that this main power feed for that would be fine. Otherwise, I don't think the vehicle should start. Um, so maybe it's just a problem with this circuit right here. Well, if we look here, since we don't see any solid state electronics because we're not smart key, we're just the regular key, one of the things we can do is, we so it's this power circuit right here, it goes over to G, we follow G, comes back over here and does all this stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if all of this stuff is dead because I know I saw I can't remember if it was module 5, but there was a 7.5 amp fuse, a module fuse that wasn't lit. Um, but if we see right here, this wiper fuse, that's a big fuse. Well, we would be safe to put power right here. You know, provide our own power circuit. This is a big enough fuse that it can handle uh, whatever else is on the circuit. You know, you wouldn't want to power um, one of these 7.5 amp fuses 
especially if the wipers are on and then also the wipers start drawing a lot and that could pop these fuses but a 25 amp fuse that's plenty big enough for the little bits that are on here uh, we don't even have rear seat heaters i'm pretty sure either way we'll make sure those are off so i'm just going to use the power probe and right on this fuse i'm just going to supply power and let's see if our blower works wouldn't that be something okay so we're back inside the vehicle we have our power probe and we are this one right here hey there so these it's hard to get these to actually touch we should see yeah let's just try it no i don't think i'm making contact with that hmm let me get something different i think yeah same thing same issues as having with um oh this light's in the way so same issue as having with this uh test light what i ended up going with this um yeah you know what i can just use this i don't know if this little uh piercing or um i don't know if this little back prober is capable of handling any kind of sizable current probably not i could oh come on i could just as easily melt my uh back prober but you know what these things are cheap but uh i'm definitely not gonna be able to do that with one hand so let me get a different tool and we can do this another way okay so i got these fuse loops they're pretty handy so the premise of these is you pull out the fuse you plug them in you get a nice loop that you can put an amp clamp around easily test uh power throughout uh, a fuse and you put the fuse in there now this is for a mini but the minis are the same profile as a micro they stick out further but you can plug a mini fuse in in place of a of a micro um so of course you can't do it the other way around but so because of that we got a mini 25 amper we'll plug that in there now we'll grab our handy dandy pliers pull out our fuse so if you're not familiar with those they look like that kind of little runts um but yeah they are the same profile so we can take this and i know it might be hard to see because my hands in the way we'll just kind of plug that in i can't really see much because of the lighting but we'll just deal with that okay so this this fuse loop is particularly handy because it it comes off with this uh banana plug lead so that would be easier to put this into. Um, oh, fucking stupid magnets. Everything's catching. Kima. There we go. And if we look on our power probe, our green light is lit, which means it's finding a, a ground through all the devices. That means we're actually connected. So we'll apply power hey can you hear that look at that we'll take off power apply power awesome i wonder what about our wipers let's hit that hey look at that Take the power away. Apply power. Okay. Well, that seems to be our problem. It is a power feed issue. Now, one of the things that's particularly handy about doing this, this guy here, this generation of power probe, I think um, 
if I'm not mistaken, I think it can only handle 15 amps of current. It has its own circuit breaker inside there. Um, so, you know, if I was going to do something stupid like this, right? Right? So you hear that click? This is a dead short, right? And then you see this, it says C8, and then that'll wait a little bit of time. Uh, or I got to hit that, yeah. No, I don't have to hit that. But yeah, so you have to wait, you'll have to wait a little bit of time um, for it to cool down. Oh yeah, right there. There's a little button on the side. Now it works again, right? So if there was some kind of dead short that took that circuit out, it would have affected this. This thing would have popped just like what it did before and I would have had to push this uh, circuit breaker. So because we applied power there and everything else worked hunky-dory, we don't have to worry about any of that. This um, aftermarket stereo, somehow or another, just a pure coincidence. We got an ignition switch issue. So uh, we will pull the column cover, uh, look for our ignition switch. Let's go back to that wiring diagram so we can figure out who's who for what colors. Okay, so back at our wiring diagram, this wiper fuse right here, that's where we put power. And then our wipers worked, our air con worked, the blower worked, all that sort of business. So this whole leg here would have had no power. We manually supplied power and everything worked. We go back to G, we follow G, and we come up. So there's an orange wire coming out of the ignition switch. The power feed for this part of the ignition switch is the green wire. So we'll open up the column covers, we'll find the ignition switch, we'll make sure that our green wire has power and we got the key in the on position still so our orange wire should have power but it would have to be, now it's possible this wire could be broken somewhere, right? I mean people were in here so who knows, it's possible maybe they for whatever reason tied into this wire and they damaged it, uh, we don't know but if they damaged the wire then we're going to be testing right at the ignition switch. So if they damage the wire, we'll find power coming out of the ignition switch on this orange wire. If we find that, then we know we have a broken wire because we got no power down here, right? So we'll go directly at the ignition switch and we'll make sure uh, we'll test the green wire. That's our feed. That should have power. We suspect that will because it starts and it charges. Um, and we suspect we won't see anything on the orange wire. So let's open that up and see what we see. Okay, we're back inside. And as you can see, one of the reasons why I like having the charger on there, we are still in the on position. That never changed. So we'll go underneath here. Let me just crawl underneath. And this column cover. Huh, looks like someone's been here. It wasn't me. Ah, what do you know? Because there are, there's a screw, it's supposed to be a screw right there. There's nothing there. Uh, for this, I will have to turn it off, so I'll have to pull out the key. Ah, you know, people working on their own stuff. <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, put some screws back. Oh, uh, well, what can you do? All right, uh, what do we see? Uh oh. Huh. Huh. Well, I don't know how well that's going up. Not broken, not blue wire. Someone cut back the insulation. Yeah, what's all that junk? Hmm. Weird. That kind of makes me wonder if someone put in a, uh, um, security system or something at some point and then it uh, caused a lot of problems like they always do and then someone just removed it but maybe didn't do a very good job of removing it either way we are on this ignition switch thankfully it's nice and open we are after the green wire that's our feed and our orange wire that's our uh, uh, supply for all the circuits that seem to be faulty. So, let's grab the key. And 
put this back in the on position. All right, so we don't have power back in there. So because of that, we noticed our circuits are still dead. That's our, our wiper. No wiping is happening. No fan is happening either. We'll keep the fan on one. So if that comes back with us manually powering things, we don't want to be over, cir over, um, over circuiting it. Yeah, that's right. Um, we don't want to be um, supplying power in a state where it's demanding a lot of power. So let's get our, let's get this out of the way. And maybe we can move these a little bit. We'll get our test light. We'll get our probe. Now, this is live, so we'll be careful of that end there. I really should be using one of the other style, but whatever. And I'll just squeeze this up in there. Okay, I believe that's touching. This is on the green wire right now. Okay, uh, maybe I can move that with that light. We can see that better. Okay, as we suspected, our green wire is fine. That's our um, power feed that also feeds our starting charging system. So if that were an issue, we th don't think we would be starting. So let's go into this orange wire. Okay. Now, huh, ain't that interesting. We're directly into there. We got no power coming out of there. <laughs> Weirdly enough, somehow they're saying that they just put that in there, but um, it sure seems like it has nothing to do with that. It sure seems like it's just a faulty ignition switch. On these guys here, that's just a mechanical switch. There's nothing fancy there. There's no electronics or any of that sort of stuff. It's just a contact switch. Um, you know, there's no way of damaging just one side of that. Weird. Well, what if... Um, hmm. Let's see if I can keep that there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to just touch this to there because that's a little easier to keep on, I think. There we go. Okay, let's supply, let's try supplying power right there. Hey, look at that. Huh. So what that does, that shows us a couple things. It shows us that this is in fact in that proper orange wire. Um, it is, you know, making connection and we don't have a broken wire. Um, it's about as cut and dried as it can be. Our green wire right here, our feed, would be coming through this um, uh, ignition switch. And right now, because we're in the on position, that should be coming right across to this orange wire, but it's not. So what if there's a problem with the, the physical the tumbler or anything else with the key? So if we fiddle with our key in the ignition, and we'll watch that, we'll see if we can't make that, make any kind of contact as we're playing with our key. Because we could have an issue with the physical housing. Maybe somehow the, the rod isn't fully engaging the the tumbler just right and you know what we're wiggling this whole thing around we see nothing at all on those lights and don't forget this is still in the one position so that should light up and it's not so yeah I think that's just a bad um, bad ignition switch now one of the other things we can do too because what if this green wire somehow 
Um, so what if this green wire is actually getting power from something else? Um, because we saw it light with this. Now if that were the case, uh, it really shouldn't light very strongly with this, but let me just show you what I'm thinking. Because we're just thinking about any other possible possibility of this being anything other than this ignition switch because we don't like putting in parts that don't belong so does it still light and it does green is our our power feed to this ignition switch for this circuit it's still lighting with it unplugged so that means it's not actually back feeding from anything else on any of these other wires um, it is in fact just a bad ignition switch and that's all there is to Thankfully, these are actually really nice to change. Uh, just screw right here, screw right there. It'll pop right out, put a new one in. And Bob's your uncle. So, interesting, interesting case on this car. A lot of coincidences. But you know what? When you have issues like this, this just goes to show it's best not to try to involve yourself with everything at once. Pick something something that's easy to go through, follow it through until its conclusion. You know, you hope for a case like this where it solves everything, but if it doesn't, you know what, just solve whatever's easiest and then move on to the next. Because if you try and do thing, 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 you just get overwhelmed and you end up just turning in a wheel and you're not really getting anywhere. So anyways, this guy right here, all it needed was that ignition switch. So we'll get one coming whenever that shows up. Uh, I don't know if I'll be the one putting it in, but um, yeah, proof's in the pudding. Everything else works when you supply power. It's um, just a faulty ignition switch. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, I know I learned a thing or two along the way too. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Okay, so we got our new ignition switch. It is in. Um, so pretty easy to change when you're changing it. You know, of course, uh, unplug the connector first. Those two little screws come out. Uh, the ignition switch won't come out immediately. You will have to put the key in the on position in order for it to let go of it completely. Um, and then same thing too, leave the key in the on position. You can slide the new one in. Uh, it'll engage, it'll go all the way in, put the screws in there, um, plug it back in. It's a good idea to turn it off before you plug it back in. But moment of truth, uh, we'll get our, grab our key. Come on, put the key in, and voila, we got wipers all on its own, we got our lights, and we're not supplying power anywhere. That's uh, a fix.